By the time I noticed him, he was nearly upon me, walking in my shadow. We go together. I took one look at his right arm and knew he was a sorcerer. He spoke as if he had only just learned to. He called himself Radox. We hunt same monster. Apparently he sought the same beast as I. He gazed at me with a simple innocence and spoke again. We go together. Time for fight. I felt strange after observing the way Radux fought. It's difficult to explain. But there's certainly something that sets him apart from us. Something missing. And there was another thing. He kept scratching his chest. Blood kept dripping from it. I am sick. That was his only answer. When asked about the incessant scratching. Soon it occurred to me. This was no ordinary sickness. And so I asked him, When did you first get sick? After Mother, I sacrificed her. But it was all matter of fact for Radux. She try kill me. So I kill her. My mother. She hate me. I am human, so she hate me. Because he was human. What did this mean? Mother, she is not human. Radux willingly shared his past. We were interrupted by the appearance of a monster. I told myself that I would ask Radux more after the fight. The man had no feelings. This was the sense one got observing Radux. And with good reason. After learning of his background, it began to make sense. Nobody wants me. Apparently, Radux was an abandoned child. When he was very young, he was left behind in a forest. A surrogate mother took him in and raised him. 
His mother was a monster of the forest. I am child of monster. He does not comprehend it all. His life is fantastically absurd, but for him it is all he knows. Born to a human, raised by a monster. How did he find his way back to the human world? My mother, she try kill me. So I kill her. No choice. Her actions were contradictory. Why raise a human son only to kill him later? In any case, Radax had learned a few things since losing his mother. Monsters kill humans. Monsters are the enemy. He hated monsters. Because his own mother was one, and she turned on him. It appears that Radux has never felt threatened while battling a monster. With one exception, the fight to the death with his mother. He did something that day that he was taught by no one. I imagine that the parents that abandoned him must have been sorcerers. For only this could explain his innate ability. The tragic events surrounding Radux's separation from his mother still affect him deeply. Each time he kills a monster, he is reminded of his past. What he did to his mother. The affliction of his chest is no disease. Only he does not know what to call it. And how could he? Guilt. This is what afflicts his chest. I hope no family. He pondered this as we were closing in on a monster. It was clearly an earnest thought. Losing family. Not nice. He was worried that the monsters we hunted may be survived by family. Why keep hunting monsters despite such misgivings? Monsters kill humans. I began to think. His mother's death had granted Radux two emotions. Her abandonment of him sparked a hatred of monsters. But at the same time, he felt guilt for killing his own mother. He was torn by these feelings. Even if he were to tear his own heart from his chest, 
his suffering would not be eased. Time for fight. Victory is the only goal. Do what it takes. No. This isn't happening. Radax looked despondent. His heart was in tune. This was very human, odd, for somebody raised by a monster. But perhaps this was exactly as his monster mother had wished. Her assault of her own son began to make sense. Human and monster cannot coexist. And... Claiming a life causes deep guilt. Humans required such knowledge to survive. His mother had chosen to raise Radux as a human, not a monster. For the sake of her precious son. I shared my thoughts with Radox. My mother. Happy now? Radox is learning to be human. A child's growth brings joy to every mother. Okay. So, I happy too. And the innocence of it brought warmth to the heart. Radux will grow up fine. One day, he will understand the affliction of his chest. Perhaps we will meet again and laugh about old times. Surely his mother would have wished it this way. Once counted among Avalon's most fearsome sorcerers, Egress feared by all. His role within their ranks was quite specific. To stalk and kill sorcerers who violated the code. Why Avalon's blade had turned on his old masters, I know not. Within Avalon's halls, none remain who might know the man's reasons. Though his white garb suggested the rumors held some truth. It seemed Egris now kept company with Sanctuarium, Avalon's sworn foe. Though, for all he changed, his epithet remained the same. Still, the Mage Slayer. 
These days, it's Avalon sorcerers he hunts in Sanctuarium's name. The only difference is that his old allies curse him for a traitor as they flee. And so, as he stood before me, I thought I was to be next. He was hesitant, and that spoke volumes. He said he would end my life, yet I felt no enmity from him. He was toying with me, surely. I questioned him immediately, and received an odd reply. Salvation lies in death alone. It falls on me to show you. Anything to do with sacrifice is repellent to Sanctuarium. The taking of life should be kept to a minimum, they say. Hear my tale, and you will welcome death's embrace. Till then. I'd welcome company on the road. I had no reason to follow. But still, curiosity compelled me. Why had Sanctuarium marked me for death? Why was he waiting to strike? And why should this Mage Slayer speak of salvation? It seemed he was a walking contradiction. Sanctuarium's rules on sacrifice see to it that only a select few of its members are allowed to kill. And even then, the act must serve to advance their lofty goal of world salvation. That determination rests solely in the hands of Sanctuarium's leader, Lenixian. A familiar name. But I knew her better as Sympatha. The alias she gave when we traveled side by side. Lenixian has ordered that death be bestowed upon you. We were companions. At our road's end, we had parted with a smile. Why then ask for my death now? Stranger than the Order was the man she chose to execute it. While in Avalon's employ, he spared no words for those he sacrificed. He was their paragon, embodying all they stood for. And now this hardened killer asked his target to travel by his side? Come, let us save that beast. 
Surely no assassin ever spoke so frequently of salvation. He was quite the contrarian. Compassion unto all creatures. Such is Lenixian's creed. I watched her practice it with my own eyes. And now that avatar of mercy seeks my death. I would be lying if I claimed to understand. In the end, my curiosity won out. I agreed to join this mad journey to find out her true intent. But she wasn't the leader of a band of heretics to me. Then, as now, she remains sympather. My partner in the ordeal. Like the partner within my arm. Thoughts of her always dredge up memories of the past. Do you know the likelihood of a monster, once saved, becoming a fiend once more? He made his offer. Half the flip of a coin. By Egress's telling, Avalon has actively suppressed that fact. Would you call this bitter draught a cup half empty or a cup half full? He spoke as if to himself, his eyes fixed upon his own arm. By the code, all monsters are sacrificed to quash the threat of only half. Its adherents practice a blithe genocide, ignorant of the truth. And I had believed the code would bring order to the world. I truly believed it a necessary evil. Accepted it as gospel. The monsters I save were born of my own hand. A loud crash echoed out some distance before us. A monster. These last days travel have shown me something. The fiends Egress hunts all bear the same form. Doppelgangers. Several causes can give rise to their kind. Chief among them is injury by a monster. The infection spreads from the wound turning those nearby. Like any plague, when the source is left alone, it's quick to spread. The evil behind the fiends we faced was one he knew well. It was me. The smile he wore was thick with irony as he marched towards the creature he himself had spawned.
until a few months ago. I was a monster myself. The revelation came as a shock to me. These things are oft kept in the shadows. Small wonder. It wouldn't do for people to hear a faithful adherent to the code had become a monster. Such inconvenient truths are erased by the upper tiers of Avalon, he explained. And the one responsible for saving him after his transformation, Lenixian herself. Still, it made no sense. How could Avalon's paragon fall so low? By his account, it was strict adherence to the code. The code may save the world, but it does precious little for the one following it. The price of a long career of sacrificing had pushed Egress's right arm to its limits. Yet still, the orders to kill continued. He did as Avalon bid, and so it was he too became a fiend. The next victim, appointed by his superiors, was none other than Egress himself. He came to realize. He had slain countless monsters in Avalon's name. How many of those had been his colleagues once, used as pawns, then thrown away? He swore revenge on Avalon. Swore to expose the code for its hypocrisy. And so the Mage Slayer lives on. Traitor and nemesis to his former cause. I will be killing you before long. But before we come to that... He stopped. There was something he wanted to ask me. Why did I agree to come with him? I told you, come with me and you're sure to die. Odd, you're the first to face death with such composure. He wasn't the only one troubled. I'd had my own doubts since our first meeting, since I saw the price he bore in his right arm. Despite his words, Egress was yet to make his move. Or perhaps it was that he couldn't. Upon hearing that he had been a fiend, my growing doubts gave way to certainty. He could not still be the Mage Slayer he once was. Were he to persist in sacrificing sorcerers now, his fate would be certain. He'd have reverted to his monstrous form by now. My crimes are too grave to be wiped clean by a brief penance. Are the words that came from his mouth. You're sharp. I can see why you'd be one of Lenixian's favorites. Judging by his response, it seemed my suspicions were correct. He confessed that he had not taken a single life since joining Sanctuarium. Death is escape for some, for others. 
Escape just looks like death. As we spoke, our final quarry appeared before us. You may find death at this journey's end, and salvation within it. For all its contradictions, I now saw the true meaning of his words. He made his offer. Should you wish it, I can kill you here and now. You will be free of the code. Free to live a normal life. Such was the salvation this assassin preached. I doubt many sorcerers would be eager to return to Avalon after hearing of Egress's past but how to free them of it. False death serves as well as the real thing to sever one's ties. And even Avalon has better things to do than hunt the dead. This was a chance to wash clean the slate, to begin anew. Death as a sorcerer, in exchange for true freedom. It made perfect sense. Then this was a gift from Sympatha to me. Should you wish it? I could almost hear her voice as the words echoed in my mind. This explained why Egress had offered me a choice from the outset. And yet... Not without regret, I shook my head. No. Why not? He solemnly inquired. To my eyes, he seems a man still trapped by the cold. The grudge he bears, legitimate as it is, binds him. By comparison, it is a matter of far less consequence to me. Then, why keep up the fight? It was the woman in my arm I heard. My partner guides me, so I fight on. I live now for something far greater than the code. So I must say no. Egris shook his head, giving a wry smile. You are the first man. I fail to give his death. Perhaps we're similar creatures, you and I. Both of us captive to something. Should you ever wish to meet your death as a sorcerer, send for me. He smiled earnestly.